In our last lesson, we learned about Mr. Fulton's steamboat. Some advantages of steamboat travel were that it was faster, cheaper, more reliable, and didn't depend on the weather. A disadvantage, though, was that it needed water, and many cities in America were not connected by rivers or lakes. In order to solve this disadvantage, people in the 1800s did something creative, and we'll talk about it in our Read Aloud today. Our Read Aloud today is about the Erie Canal. A canal is a deep, wide ditch dug by people to allow water to move from a river or lake to another place. During the time of westward expansion in the United States, people were very innovative and canals were built to connect rivers to lakes or other rivers. By using canals, steamboats and other type of boats allowed Americans to travel to more places. One very famous canal named the Erie Canal was built between Lake Erie and the Hudson River. Other states, including Ohio and Pennsylvania, soon built canals also. By the 1830s, there was an all-water route from New York all the way down to New Orleans. By the 1840s, there were more than 3,000 miles of canals in the United States. This time in the history of our country is known as the Canal Era. An era is a period of time. So the canal era was the period of time when canals were being built, which greatly increased the westward movement of people. Today, we are going to read a fictional story about the Erie Canal. Even though the people in our story are fictional and the things that happen are fictional, the Erie Canal was real. And this could be something that actually happened to people in our country who worked on the Erie Canal during the canal era. Before we read that story, though, we'll go over our vocabulary words. Erie Canal. Again, the Erie Canal is a 363-mile-long man-made waterway created during the early 1800s to join the Hudson River and Lake Erie in New York State. Freight. Freight are goods that are moved from one place to another by ship, train, truck, wagon, or airplane. It took the crew an entire morning to load the large amount of freight onto the ship. Tow. To tow means to pull or haul. We had to tow my uncle's car to a service station when it broke down on the highway. Transport. Transport means to carry or move something from one place to another. The farmer will use his truck to transport his produce to the farmer's market. I'm going to describe two ways that someone can transport something. I want you to choose the one that you would prefer or the one that you would like better. Would you prefer for someone to transport you to school on a bus or in a car? Would you prefer someone to transport you to a soccer field? or to the library? Would you prefer, prefer for someone to transport carrots or bananas to your grocery store? Would you prefer to transport yourself or have someone else transport you to a friend's house? Would you prefer for someone to transport you on land, in the water, or through the air. Pa and I have been making our way along the Erie Canal from Albany to Buffalo today at a good steady pace. We're traveling on our brand new flat boat. A flat boat is a big flat boat on which we carry goods and products along the Erie Canal. Well, to be honest, the flat boat isn't quite ours yet but almost. Last night, Pa told me, when we reach Buffalo, we will have made the last payment on this flat boat. Then it's all ours at last. You see, we made a deal with Mr. Franklin that every time we take the flat boat up and back for him, part of our pay goes towards buying the flat boat for ourselves. 
It has taken three years of hard work. We're really excited to actually own the flat boat because there, then we will be able to keep all of the money we earn on each trip we make. Ma and Sis are waiting for us in Buffalo. I can't wait to see them again. I love being on the flat boat with Pa, but all of the work we do makes us tired. The thing is, I don't know exactly how many more days it will take to get to Buffalo. It depends on how much of the freight we sell along the way. The more we sell, the less the, less the flat boat will weigh and the faster we will be able to travel. Sometimes a store owner or owner or a manufacturer at some town or village asks us to add his products onto our flat boat. Every time we take more goods on board, it slows down our travel. The word board here means on a boat. Board can also mean a flat piece of wood. My favorite part of helping Pa is that I get to care for the mules. We have such a big flat boat that it takes three mules to tow or pull it. They walk on the tow path next to the canal and pull the ropes that are connected to the flat boat. Some smaller flat boats along the canal are one mule flat boats, or sometimes horses or oxen do the pulling. Before folks built the Erie Canal, it took longer to move things from the east westward. Because a flat boat floats on water, it's much easier to transport heavy freight like coal and wood. Plus, you don't need to worry about a wagon wheel breaking down on the trail. Think about all of the dangers that the Morgan family, in the first story we read, encountered with their covered wagon. Families like this one had less difficult journeys on flat boats when the weather was good. Not only that, it costs less money to travel on the canals than over land. Pa says that for every dollar it used, it used to cost to travel on land, now only costs about a dime to travel on the canal's water. Because the canal made it so much easier and faster to head westward, many people moved west to farm or build new cities. See, Pa explained to me that moving out to the west seemed like a good idea once the people there knew they could sell whatever they grew or made back to the folks in the east, as well as to people in the west. It's amazing how much the Erie Canal changed things here. It's hard to imagine a time without it. Lucky for us, today was a really great day for traveling up the canal. In nice weather, we can travel a lot of miles. When it's stormy though, like it was a couple of weeks ago, it's not so pleasant. It was snowing so much, we nearly had to stop right where we were. The snow was coming down so heavily, you couldn't see your hand if you held it out right in front of you. Hold your hand out in front of your face. Imagine that it's snowing so hard that you can't only see your hand, that you can't even see your hand. Fortunately, our mules are always able to stay on the path, even in a snowstorm. So I just let them lead the way and they bring us safely to the next town. Anyway, I think that's about it for now. I'm pretty tired after all the work today. I think it's time for me to get some sleep so I'm ready to work on the flat boat tomorrow. What kind of adventures do you think this 12 year old boy will have on the Erie Canal tomorrow? Make a prediction. In our read aloud, we heard that the 12 year old boy said, every time we take more goods on board, it slows down our travel. In this sentence, on board means to be on or in a boat. This definition is shown in image one, people are on board the flat boat on the Erie Canal. Board can also mean a long, thin, flat piece of wood. Board can also refer to a flat piece of material that is used for a special purpose, such as writing. We see this in our third image, the chalkboard and the whiteboard. All right, my friends, I've got some questions about that story that we just read. 
My first question is, what was the topic of our read aloud today? What thing or place was the main topic? The Erie Canal. What was the setting? Our setting was also the Erie Canal, or the boat that was on the Erie Canal. Why were canals built in the United States in the 1800s? Why did we build those canals? Right, we talked about at the beginning of this lesson how a disadvantage of steamboat travel was that there weren't rivers that connected cities. So we built canals so that we could use steamboats to transport goods and people to different cities. Why were the boy and his father in our story traveling on the Erie Canal? They were working and part of their job was to take freight over the Erie Canal from place to place. How are mules and other animals important to the Erie Canal? Right, they towed the boats or walked along us on the land beside the canal and pulled the boats along. What problems did those boats face on the canal? Bad weather is always a concern. Was it very fast with the animals pulling them? No, especially if they had lots of freight. How did canals like the Erie Canal increase westward expansion, do you think? Turn and talk about that one with your neighbor for just a minute. All right, this is a picture of the Erie Canal. The Erie Canal was first used in the year 1825, which was almost 20 years after Mr. Fulton invented the steamboat. I'm going to add this picture to our timeline. I'm going to put it right next to Robert Fulton's first steamboat. All right, my friends, go ahead and open up the PDF that is attached to this assignment, and I will jump over to my computer to show you what to do. In this picture, we can see the boy taking care of the mules that are towing the flatboat down the canal. In 1905, a songwriter named Thomas Allen wrote a song about working on the Erie Canal the most famous of canals during the canal era. This song was written about 80 years after the canal was built. I'm going to read the lyrics of this song to you. I don't know what the tune is, so I can't sing it, but I'm going to read the lyrics to you. I want you to think about how the song is similar to the experience that the boy wrote about in his journal. All right, here we go. The Erie Canal by Thomas Allen. I've got a mule. Her name is Sal, 15 miles on the Erie Canal. She's a good old worker and a good old pal, 15 miles on the Erie Canal. We've hauled some barges in our day, filled with lumber, coal, and hay. And we know every inch of the way from Albany to Buffalo. Low bridge, everybody down. Low bridge, cause we're coming to a town. And you'll always know your neighbor You'll always know your, your pal if you've ever navigated on the Erie Canal. Talk to your neighbor about what some of the similarities between the song and the boy's journal entry were. When you are done, you are all finished with your assignment today. There is no physical assignment for you to turn in today. All right, my friends, I will see you in our next lesson.